Hi, I'm Patricia with Buzz and Bark Animal Reiki, and we're going to be doing a remote Reiki session, but I'm going to start with um, a very low sounding flute. It's not a bass flute, it's a G sharp minor. It's the lowest tone flute that I have, and low tones help with relaxation. So this is a video that you can watch when you and your pet are cuddling on a couch or doing something where you both want to just chill. So this is Reiki for calming the nervous system, or I don't know if I can say that because it's medical, but for calmness. Koshi chimes for Earth, so this is to help you get grounded. I don't even need reverb in this room. So we're going to start with um, what we call the Reiki shower. So I'm going to, I mean you can do this too. You just put your arms above your head and this Reiki light will come through like water and it comes through the crown of your head and then it goes through all your chakras, all the way down to the ground and through both of your feet and it washes away all the tension, just all the stuff that you don't need anymore. It just washes it off. So we'll do this like three times. And this is what we call Gasho in Reiki. It's like the prayer hand position. We'll do another Reiki shower. Imagine the shower like full blast, just going through and just moving everything out into the light. Just let it all go. Okay, we're gonna do it a third time. We're really gonna open up that crown chakra and let that loving Reiki energy in. And let it fill up your heart and just go all the way into the ground. And then whatever you have left, just share it with the world. Okay, so this is my Reiki surrogate, <laughs> Lottie the Leopard. And I don't know if you can see my lap, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the Reiki symbols over. This is what I would do in an in-person session as well. But this is the surrogate, which is for you and your pet. Oh, maybe I should put this direction, maybe. Looks a little bit better. And now I'm going to run the Reiki symbols over it. You don't need to know what the symbols are. Except that this one is the power symbol. The next one is the emotional symbol. And then we do the power symbol again. We're doing the Reiki sandwich. And then I'm going to do the distance symbol. And I'm going to end with the power symbol. So we can point it upward. And I like to do three of each, like three times over. And then, normally when I do a remote session, I will use a surrogate. Um, sometimes it's, you can't see it, but it's my big um, stuffed bear, because it's the most, well, I mean, that one works really well for a human, because of all the hand positions. 
Sometimes I will just beam like this. I can make sort of a video kind of thing where I'm just beaming. Either way, um, the Reiki's going through. Now, if I were doing an in-person session with an animal, what I would do is I would sit, sit down comfortably somewhere, and then I would just put my hands down like this and run the Reiki through my hands. That's after clearing out the room and everything else, and I forgot to bring my clearing spray. So I just clear everything out, and then I do this and I let the animal come to me. So what usually happens with a cat, for instance, is, you know, I'm allergic to cats, so don't ever expect me to do a home visit with a cat. But in the future, I, I will, you know, if I have like, good friends or people that I know their animal really well, then I will do a home visit. I don't do home visits for animals I don't know, um, just for liability purposes. However, if I was doing a, um, one for a cat, um, usually what they do is they wrap around the legs and they'll, um, if your hands are down like this, they'll arch their back up into the hand or they'll put their head, they'll butt their, their head underneath the hand. Now dogs, for some reason, I don't know if they just all have hip problems, um, will put their, like, they'll run their hips under the hands, like they'll, they'll try to get their hips or if they have a lower back, they'll put their lower back under the hands or their head or whatever part of their body they want to receive the Reiki. But when I was being trained, we were told to actually do all the hand positions on the animal. And it's very difficult to actually do that unless you have um, a space where you have them on a animal massage table and the animal's going to stay still the whole time. Um, usually they want to move around. Um, Reiki is very strong for them. It's subtle for us, but it's strong for them. And so, so they, they know when to approach it and when to back off from it. So I tend to do remote. It is a harder sell um, when I'm in pet works and other places. I think people want someone to come over to their house and do the Reiki on their animal so they know what's actually being done. Um, so it's, it's kind of a trust thing, like, well, how am I going to trust this person doing a remote session? I usually do an intake. And then I get all the information. I can use a photograph, again, a surrogate like this. And I'll do the hand positions on the surrogate. But because this is, my hands are big and this is a small surrogate, we're just going to, um, I'm not going to really do the hand positions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run crystals, because I do crystal Reiki. I'm also trained in that as well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run like these three different crystals. I've got two rose quartz and I have a, um, I think this is a purple fluorite. I thought I had, um, yeah, I do. I have a Peruvian turquoise. So these are all relaxing, loving, unconditionally loving stones. And depending on what the purpose is, so if you have a timid animal and you want to put more fire in the animal, the element of fire, then I would use more fiery stones or more motivating stones. For relaxing, you know, um, there'd be different stones for focus. Like if you're going to have an animal go do, a, you know, dog do agility, and you want your dog to be focused before a contest or something like that, then we do a focus session. You know, to help the the animal stay alert and to be able to pay attention and to be able to stay in that moment. You know, the way that athletes need to do. So we're going to start with the Peruvian turquoise, and I'm going to do that around the um, throat chakra. So you might actually, and this is also the color of the throat chakra. And I'm going to do the neck as well. Now, if an animal has an overactive throat chakra, they're going to be overly vocal. They're going to be more loud, more robust, um, to the point where they're almost exhausting themselves. Uh, they might, if they're a cat, they're going to be meowing excessively. If they're a dog, they'll be barking, whining, growling. I mean, um, but they'll be uh, expressing themselves mostly um, through sound. And that's okay, because that's what animals do. You don't want them not to, but if you find that it's excessive, then that means that that throat chakra is overactive. 
underactive tends to be more of a timid animal that does not express themselves. So you get an animal, say, from a shelter, and the dog doesn't bark, doesn't cry, doesn't do anything. It's just a silent, cowering, um, not able to express itself. And Reiki can definitely help unblock, not only unblock the chakra, but to balance it out. So you don't want an over too much energy in the chakra and you don't want it not to be enough. You want it to be in balance. So that's what balancing the chakras is about. And so right now what we're doing is we're balancing the throat chakra. So it's not excessive and it's not where the animal doesn't communicate at all. You know where they've shut down. And I'm not a vet. I don't prescribe, diagnose, or treat. If you do have an animal that's shut down, make sure you're getting the right care for that animal. Although Reiki can be part of that. I don't even know if you can see me doing this because I can't see what's on the camera. I'm going to run it up and down the spine as well. This is a very relaxing stone. I use it for when I need to relax. Another thing that could be very relaxing too in a session, especially an in-person session, is to run a diffuser with lemon balm or some lavender. You don't want to put a lot in there because animals have a really good, you know, really strong sense of smell. For a human, you can put a few more drops, but I'd say for if you're going to be working with an animal and you have a diffuser, put one drop of oil in there. That's going to be enough for you. You might not be able to smell, but believe me, they can. And you'll notice them relaxing. Okay, so now we're going to work on the heart chakra. Because, you know, animals, they always say that they're unconditionally loving and all the rest of that. But sometimes they can't receive or give love. And so we want to balance the heart chakra. We don't want them to be overjoyed and we don't want them to be lethargic or shut down. So there's a piece of hair that's on my hand that I can't get off. There we go. So we're going to kind of do this in the heart area. Now, the heart area actually for an animal would be right about there. Not exactly, the, you know, we always kind of think of the chest as a heart, but for maybe for some of them it is. If I can remember my CPR class. So I'm just going to kind of run this rose quartz. And this one is shaped like a heart. And then I had a second rose quartz, which is the wand. This is one that can be used for uh, if an animal's got some serious grief going on. And then what I'm doing is I'm pulling that energy out with this wand. Do it both ways, I guess. Um, taking that energy out and I'm putting it in the light and removing it and I'm putting it in the light and I'm asking Reiki to replace it with love. You know, there's a lot of things to grieve too um, for an animal. Could be a person moving out of the house, could be a divorce, could be the death of someone, could be the death of an animal companion, could even be an animal companion that they normally see at the dog park if they're a dog. Obviously a cat's not going to miss a dog at the dog park, or there's a rabbit. But yeah, all animals grieve. And so if you have an animal that's grieving right now, we're pulling all that out of the heart and replacing with unconditional love and letting them know that they are secure and everything's okay. It's not that they're not going to stop grieving, they have to go through the process, but it does help. This is a very short session, we're going to end it now. Oh, and when I give a, um, a Reiki session that's not like a video, I don't talk this much. I'm actually quiet, <laughs> just in case you're wondering.
And I'm going to end this session before my camera shuts off. Okay, for the highest and best, may the Reiki only go where it's needed and continue to flow where it's needed for highest and best. And we're going to end with the fire and earth chimes here. And then I'm going to drink some water because you always need to remember to drink water after a Reiki session. Get some fresh water for your pet if you have a pet with you. And wash your hands in cold water.